Hi folks, it's Rebecca from Rev Bikes. Today we're going to talk about pedelec sensors. So the pedelec is what makes a 250 watt motor electric bike road legal. So strictly speaking, a throttle is not allowed in, I think, all states in Australia at this stage. You must have a pedelec engaged system. This means from your pedaling alone, the motor will engage. So rather than having to use a throttle to engage the motor, when you have a pedelec set up, all you need to do, move the pedals and you see the motor start to turn. The, the benefit is we've got five levels of assistance too. So on level one, we're only getting about 20% of full current flowing from the controller. Great way to actually conserve battery power. On level five, we can get the full current from, from the controller. You will drain your battery faster, but you will get to your top speed faster. Those levels don't affect the top speed, just the amount of current it takes to get there. So fitting one of these is a little different for every bike. We're going to show you the most straightforward, regular type of bottom bracket with internal bearings today. So let's leap in. So the parts we'll be using, the magnetic disc, the sensor ring, which runs to the controller, a 14mm socket, we have a crank extractor tool, a 15mm, preferably a spanner rather than a shifter, a lock ring tool, and we'll probably have, just in case, a handy shifter. You may have a cap over the top of this bolt here, usually just lever that off with a flathead screwdriver. So we need the 14mm socket, grab that over the, over the bolt, you may need to use a bit of force here, there we go. So if you've got one that's a little bit, a uh, little bit shorter than the crank arm, that's really super handy. All the same, once it gets to about there, you can wind that out by hand. All right, that's out. You'd struggle to get this crank extractor tool in there with that bolt in. Obviously, that would not be a good idea. So the way these work, you want to unwind the middle uh, thread so that you can put the outer thread into the thread here on the crank. So that holds it into position. Make sure it's sitting nice and square and there shouldn't be any pressure at all when you're threading that on. Don't try and force that because if you cross thread your, um, your threads in there, you're going to really struggle and have to use an angle grinder to get your crank off, which is not so fun. All right, so the, uh, the way this works, we get our 15 mil spanner. We need to, we're pushing this thread in which pushes against the axle inside and effectively draws the crank back. So again, you need a little bit of muscle in this one. Uh, sometimes they're more seized than other times. Once you sort of get to that point, there it goes. So you can see that's that action uh, and how that, how that tool works there. It's a nifty little tool. It is a necessary part of this job, trying to get that crank off any other way is near impossible. Next, we need to remove this locking ring so that we can fit this sensor in behind it and screw it back on. We have our handy lock ring remover. That was a nice easy one to undo. Okay, so now it's time to fit our sensor. So the cable is going to go towards the inside with the sensor component facing towards where the magnetic disc is going to be. Now something to notice here is once we put that in place we have very little uh, thread left for this lock ring to actually tighten up. Whether it will even grab on that amount of thread? Not really. So, what we want to do is actually wind that thread out a little bit this way. This is where the handy little shifter comes in. So, there is probably a specific tool for this, but we can do it 
just like so. So now we can put the sensor on and we've got more thread to add the lock ring. It's actually turning the bottom bracket around as well there. Just want to make sure we hold that in place until we get the lock ring done up. So we're, as to the position of the sensor, it can be at the bottom, at the top. It's up to you. It's usually the most out of the way up the top there. Just be aware of your cable and where you want it to run. So, you know, putting it so it's going to hit those um, chain stay is probably not such a great idea so this will be nice and neat to run up and we'll just give that a little bit of a tighten with the lock ring tool there we go. that's about it's about good so that part being in place the next step is the the magnetic ring so this has little arrows on it showing you directionality of the way you would be pedaling. So in most cases these magnets will be facing the outside. If you have had to improvise and you've turned something around and changed something here, you may find the motor will engage by you pedaling backwards. If that happens, you may have made the mistake and put it on that way, your motor will engage from you pedaling backwards rather than forwards. So we push that on. And we make sure there's still enough clearance that it's not jammed right up against anything so it's free to move around with the axle. So when we put the crank back on we look to the other pedal and its position. We don't want both pedals in the same position, we want them on opposite angles. We get our little bolt and we don't need the extractor tool to do it up again, that's only for undoing it. So. We just tighten this up. Give it a nice firm tighten. You really don't want your uh, crank to fall off. All right. And if you've got that cap, you put it back on. Essentially, that is done. Just making sure um, in some cases you may find that the gap between the sensor and the magnets is a little too great. You can tap on, uh, on this metal part with a screwdriver gently and bend it out a little bit towards the magnets. Or if the opposite is true that your disc, depending on your setup, is, is too close and rubbing, then do tap that sensor away a little bit just by putting a screwdriver and a bit of a hammer to it. But essentially, that is job done. Some bikes have this type of external bearing bottom bracket. This is very hard to work with. It's actually a through axle, so we can't do the last version. This, we've done a very sneaky improvise and actually put the pedelec disc with the magnets into the other side, just mounted in amongst the cranks there. So we've actually had to cut and shape it so that it will sit in place and clear and improvised with the magnets. Quite dirty, this bike gets a lot of use. Um, but all sorts of improvising you can do. It's not as easy as what the first, uh, the first example showed. Um, the Fixie often has a single piece, a single crank. So this one, you might notice the magnets are facing inwards. That's because what we've done here is mount the sensor using a bracket. So we've completely improvised the mounting of the sensor. The plastic disc wasn't so hard, but uh, the mounting of the sensor meant that uh, we had to reverse the polarity of the magnets, the direction I should say of the magnets. Anything is possible, uh, just sometimes you have to get creative. Pedelec really does make for a very smooth and hassle-free way of engaging the motor without needing to press a throttle or anything like that. But there are different types of bottom brackets, there are different types of Pedelec setups too, so you need to find the type to match your bike. Give us a call if you've got any more questions or problems with this process. I've been Rev Becker, thanks for watching.
Nice.